So here to tell you about it from National Instruments, our senior product manager, Nicole Richard, and from Lego's headquarters in Billund, Denmark, Vanilla, France. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Ray. Let's tell them, tell them all about it. Lego Education has more than 30 years of experience in understanding how children learn. Now, we believe a hands-on approach is enabling students to understand and take care of their own learning process. With this history, we realize that there is a stigma around failing in today's society. We find that stigma in today's classrooms as well. But think about inventors. They have failed far more than they've succeeded, but they've been able to learn from their mistakes and eventually become successful. Now, in today's classrooms, students are being encouraged to find one answer. In the real world, however, we need more than one answer. Lego Education wants students to fail, and fail often, because it's an important part of the creative and innovative engineering process. Failing is offering an opportunity to learn. So how will failing help us in the future? We believe it's not enough to teach content to students. We need to teach them process skills, skills that will enable them to come up with surprising, innovative solutions to new problems. That's why I'm so excited to be able to share with you the LEGO Mindstorms today, because we do feel an obligation to prepare the creative problem solvers of tomorrow. Because 65% of those kids will have jobs that have not been invented yet. And the LEGO Mindstorms EB3 platform has been developed to enable students to build, create, program, and fail. Build, create, program, and succeed. The platform has been developed with feedback from more than 800 educators around the world, all enabling us to launch a full teaching solution. We are really happy about the very strong relationship with National Instruments. And the EV3 software concept and design has been co-developed right from the beginning. And I will hand it over to Nicole, who will give us a demo of the EV3. Thank you, Nicole. Thanks for now. So when we first started developing the LEGO Mindstorms EV3 software, we looked at our current continuum of robotic software, LEGO WeDo, LEGO Mindstorms NXT, and LabVIEW, and at how we could pull the best features from each of those into this new product in an age-appropriate way. And we're really excited about how we've been able to do that. So the new LEGO Mindstorms EV3 software contains such features as a completely redesigned programming experience that enables users to configure a block by clicking directly on the block itself, instead of having to bring up and manage a separate configuration pane, which dramatically improves the readability of programs. We've also made wiring much easier and much more tightly integrated into the experience. Another big feature is the content viewer and editor that enables teachers to build these rich tutorials and digital workbooks, and for students to be able to more easily document their projects, all right directly within the product itself. We also added a hardware page that enables users to easily view, test, and manage their brick, sensor, and motor connections, all of which now support AutoID. We've added advanced debugging features like execution highlighting and probes. We've enhanced the data logging experience over Mindstorms NXT, and much, much more. But to really show you the software, I want to bring out one of our top beta testers, 10-year-old David. How you doing, David? Good. All right, man. <laughs> That's what we need to hear. All right, David. So we hear that you are an expert in XTG programmer. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you are one of the first kids in the entire world to get to use the new EV3 software. So what do you think? I think the new EV3 software is awesome. <laughs> But why is it so awesome? It allows me to get my programs on, done faster and it's far easier to use than the NXT version. 
Uh, well, programming faster is definitely awesome. So I see you have a robot here with you. Does he have a name? His name is Nap. Nap? Well, what does what does Nap do? Yeah, Nap is my guard dog. He protects my candy from my brother and sister. Be careful. Don't get too close. I don't want him to growl at you. <laughs> Whoa, he sounds pretty fierce. Well, can you show us how you programmed him? Sure. First, let me create a project from scratch. Here, I'll click to the lobby and open up the Snap project that I started from. Oh, so is that a video of Snap in the upper right there? Yeah, here's a tutorial or a user guide, but that's for beginners and we're more advanced, so I'm gonna close that. <laughs> All right, well, let's see how the expert does it. First, I'll use the weight block to let the ultrasonic sensor know when it detects something closer than 50 centimeters. Then, I'll use a display block to show a picture of the target to let me know that an intruder was detected. <laughs> All right, so when Snap detects an intruder closer than 50 centimeters, then what does he do? Then I use the medium motor to make Snap's head Move forward and bite my sister. <laughs> then I use a sound block to make Snap growl and scare her. Then I will make Snap's head move back. So how do you know what, what uh, motor to program to move the head? One of my favorite features in the new EVT software is the hardware panel. Here I can see where everything is plugged in. I can even see how far something is from my ultrasonic sensor. Oh yeah, I can see if I move my hand in front of it, the values update live. I also want to point out when you drag your block out of the palette, it automatically detects what ports your sensors and motors are connected to and configures itself to match that. Pretty cool. Next, I'll make Snap move backwards to protect my candy. <laughs> All right, well, you're out of room. Are you done? Not quite yet. Here, I can either zoom in or out or I get the option to wire in an additional code. It's coming someday. So, <laughs> so here I will program Snap to make the most annoying sound possible. So I come running. So the most annoying sound possible is B6? Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and test it. First, let me hit the download and run button, then my program is ready to run. OK, so I heard the download sound, but it's not doing anything. It's because the ultrasonic sensor is waiting to detect something closer than 50 centimeters. Ah, yeah, I can see the weight block highlighting there. Well, should we call Ray over? Sure. Hey, Ray, you want to come join us? Sure, sure. What, what, what can I do? So, Ray, you want some candy? Sure, I'd love it. <laughs> what, what do I need to do? Just grab it. Just grab the candy? OK, let me see. Ah! <laughs> Whoa, man, that's cool, dude. You rock. <laughs> All right, awesome. Well, we have a couple other robots here that we wanted to show. There's a, a puppy and this gyro boy. So a self-balancing robot. Self-calibrate, so we have to be really still. Maybe not. Yep. Stop, okay. Stop breathing. So 
there's a lot more to the LEGO Education Mindstorms. Tell sure. us about it. Well, let me just give you all a sneak preview of uh, a mission to Mars. Uh, this is a gamification of relevant STEM curriculum material, plus three real life projects written by NASA. So we continue to offer plenty of learning opportunities within this creative environment. Wow, that's great. Well, thank you all, all for showing us the new software. David, you're the man.